Hi, and welcome to Smoke Training. In part two of this Connect Effect series, we'll explore the ins and outs of working with effect nodes. We'll show you how to add, delete, and arrange nodes, look at the connection points on a node, and we'll also look at the special mode of viewing one node while adjusting another. In this second part of our series exploring Smoke 2013's node-based effects workspace, we'll be taking a closer look at how to work with these nodes. Getting to know how to apply, rearrange and delete effect nodes in Smoke is key to becoming competent and efficient in the Connect Effects compositing workspace. Let's start by applying Connect Effects to a segment on our timeline. Select the segment, then press the keyboard shortcut Control Tab. From the Effect Type menu, select the Create Connect Effects button on the left. This takes our selected source clip through to the Connect Effects workspace. To give ourselves plenty of room to explore this workspace, let's hide the media panel on the left for the time being. At a basic level, what we see here are two main parts of the default Connect Effects workspace. The upper part is dedicated to viewing, whether it be for nodes, media, or even displaying animation keyframes. Here we see our Connect Effects schematic, the flow of nodes running from left to right. Displayed on the right side is the result view. By default, when we click on any node, the result of that node is then displayed in this right-hand viewer. The lower area contains workspace viewing options, playback controls, the effect node bin, along with access to Connect Effects preferences, and also the ability to view keyframes and timing information of our effects. This bottom section is also context sensitive. It changes according to whatever you have selected in the Connect Effects schematic. If we double click a node, for example, all its parameters that can be modified appear here. Bear in mind for the moment, what we see here in this upper area is the default Connect Effects workspace. It, however, can be highly modified to suit your own working style. So, we'll cover everything you need to know as far as customizing and navigating the Connect Effects workspace in our next episode. If you don't see the Effects node area at the bottom of the screen, click the FX Nodes button seen here. The effect nodes have all been placed into tabs to make them easier to find, based on the task that they perform. Perhaps you have a number of nodes you use all the time. Well, you can create your own node bin tab. Then all you need to do is locate your favorite nodes and drag them onto this new tab you created. This simply creates a copy of that effect node. You can rearrange the effect tabs by holding down Control and Option, and then drag the tab backwards and forwards, releasing it in the desired location. Adding effect nodes, or plugins if you like, is done by simply choosing a node from the effect panel and dragging it into the Connect Effects schematic. By dragging a node over the red connection line, you'll see that the line highlights orange. Release the node, and the effect is instantly connected into the effect flow. A node at its most basic level contains an input and an output. The mono node that we applied here shows the connection lines coming into the effect through the red tab on the left and comes out the other side on the yellow tab. On almost every node, the red tab indicates the input to the node and the yellow tab represents the output or the actual result going out of the node. The Connect Effects processing flow always works from left to right, starting with your source images, then being processed through any combination of effect nodes, finally resulting in the Connect Effects output node, which is then sent back to your timeline. If you click down and drag across a connection line, the cursor changes to show that you're in delete mode. Dragging across the connection line breaks the flow of the Connect Effects schematic. After we break the connection line, select the node. Notice the red circle in the top right hand corner? Whenever you see this red light, it indicates there's a problem with the processing of a node. Select the node with the red light and an error message is briefly displayed in the bottom left corner indicating the problem. In this case, it explains that the node requires an input. To rejoin the connection lines between nodes, simply click on the yellow output of the previous node and draw a line to the red input of the next node in the chain of effects. Notice now the red light will disappear. Let's take a look at an effect node that contains a number of inputs and outputs. Activate the FX node button to view the node panel. With the cursor over the effect node area, type a letter, for example, the letter B. This highlights just the nodes beginning with that letter. Click and drag the blend and comp node into the workspace. Notice the many different connection points on either side of the node. The same rules still apply here though. Inputs on the left side and outputs on the right side. Let's break down the different node connection colors we see here. Red indicates where you connect a front input image 
and green means a background input image is required. A blue connection point on the left side of this node indicates an input connection for an alpha channel, or you may know as a mask. Now on the right side of the node, we have the normal yellow output, which is the result of whatever effects have been added to the ConnectFX flow up until this point. Just like how the blue input represented an alpha channel on the left side, the blue output on the right side is where you can send out the processed alpha channel into the ConnectFX flow for further modification. In the case of the Blend and Comp node, it will accept two separate images and an alpha channel which can then be composited over a separate background image. A Blend and Comp node is a very useful node for combining different images using the full array of layer blend modes that you come to expect from such applications as Photoshop and After Effects. When building effects using nodes, quite often you'll want to see what effect a certain node has. You can toggle the processing of a node off temporarily. With the node selected, click the bypass button down here at the bottom right. This keeps the node connected in the node flow, but it simply ignores it and will not process it. Notice it now says bypass in the node name. Simply click the bypass button again to reactivate the processing of this node. Experimenting with visual looks and effects is where a node-based workflow is at its most powerful. At a glance, you can see in what order the effects have been applied, and you can rearrange the effect nodes by placing them at any point in the Connect Effects pipeline. Rearranging effect nodes in Smoke 2013 can be very easy. One way involves you deleting the connection line either side of a node to break the node free. Now this node can be dragged into a new location between any other two nodes and released. It is now connected back into the Connect Effects flow. However, you still need to reconnect the effect flow from where you took the node in the first place. So while this works, it's not a very efficient way of working. Here's an extremely fast way of changing the location of effect node in the connect effect schematic. Click on a node, hold down control and option and then drag the node away from the connection lines. Notice how the node has been extracted from the effect flow, yet the connection lines remain in place. Now simply drag the node into its new location, job done. Depending on where you place the node in the effect flow, it can completely change the appearance of a final result. Here, in this example, the Glow node comes first, and a number of effects are applied after it. By extracting this node and placing it last in the chain, the change in processing order can dramatically change the final result. This method of extracting nodes using control and option is a very fast way of changing the effect order while experimenting with different ideas. Now, after selecting a node, its effect parameters appear in the panel below. To quickly toggle between a node's parameters and viewing the effect node bin, Use the keyboard shortcut, Control tab In a layer-based compositing application, if you wanted to use a source clip a second time, you would duplicate the media so that you have another layer. You could do the same thing in Smoke by either right-clicking on the source clip and selecting Duplicate, or the standard Apple shortcut, Command-D, also works. However, in Smoke, you can simply draw another connection line from the original source clip onto another node. This creates a new instance of the same source media. When joining nodes together in Smoke, drawing connection lines can consume a lot of time and can become quite fiddly when nodes contain multiple inputs or outputs. When you need to join two nodes which contain just a single input and output, you can use the node kiss feature. Click on the node and as you drag it towards the previous node, press the shift key. As the nodes touch or kiss together, drag it back away again. The nodes have now been connected. When connecting nodes which contain multiple inputs and outputs, Smoke has a handy feature which can simplify the process even further. As you drag on a node, hold down the Shift key. Now tap the Option key. A node connector bar extends from the first input. A tooltip also appears letting you know the name of the input required. As we drag it closer to the previous node, this node connector makes it much easier to choose an output. Dragging the connector over the available outputs, notice the tooltip that appears. It is letting us know which output it will connect to once we let go of the node. If you keep tapping the Option key, Smoke cycles through the available inputs on the node, making it so much easier to make connections between other nodes. Deleting a node can be done in a couple of ways. You can right-click the node and select Delete. Bearing in mind, this will also remove the connecting lines on either side, breaking the connect effects flow. So extract a node first using Control and Option and drag the node free. Now you can delete using the right click menu or drag the node to the bottom of the screen and release when you see the trash icon. 
You can also start dragging a node towards the bottom of the screen while it is still connected. But if you hold down shift, when you release, the node is deleted but the connection lines stay in place. Saving the best for last now, when you build a composite inside of ConnectFX, quite often you'll need to see the result of a certain node while changing the properties of another. By default in Smoke, when you click a node to change its properties, your result view changes to show you the output of this current node, which makes sense. However, most often you'll want to see how the final result looks when modifying a node. Smoke calls this context viewing. You can view two different context points. To choose the node you wish to view the output of, right click the node and select set as context. Notice that the node has C1 in brackets at the start of the node name now. This is context view 1. Click in the viewing area to make it active. Notice the light grey border the window now has. From the viewing controls beneath, choose context 1 from the menu. Now you can double click any node and adjust its parameters while still viewing the output of another node. But here's an even quicker way to select your context viewing modes. By holding down the minus key and clicking on a node, you can set the context view. Remember to check the name of the node as it shows the context view that has been assigned to it. Now in a viewing window, all you have to do is press the number 1 or 2 and the viewer will change to show you the appropriate context view output. This feature is definitely one to remember, as I'm sure you'll end up using it in almost every effect composition you build inside of Smoke 2013. That brings to a close part two of this series, introducing Smoke 2013's visual effects compositing environment, ConnectFX. Thank you for watching. In our next episode, we'll show you how to customize and navigate your way around the ConnectFX workspace. Thank <laughs> you.